Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Collider Interview Studio at TIFF 2024 at the Cinema Center, brought to you by Range Rover Sport. I'm so excited to be sitting with the team behind the last show, girl. That premiere last night was electric. Everyone was eating your movie up, and it filled my heart to see it. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So clearly, I know what your movie is about, but because it's a festival debut, Kate, I'm going to give you these honors. Sure. <laughs> Can you tell our audience briefly what your movie is about? The movie is about Shelly, a Las Vegas showgirl, career long, whose show is about to close and she's not sure what what her future holds. Digging into uh, the evolution of this script, I'm curious, what was idea number one, the thing that started it all for you? But then also, did you have a break story moment, something that made it feel like the story was whole now? Um, I saw the show Jubilee when I was in Las Vegas in 2013, and I had a feeling that the show was not long for this world. But I knew that it had been a, a real staple in Las Vegas for over 30 years, and I was really fascinated. There were 85 women in the show, and the costumes were incredible, and the set was enormous. There was the Titanic on the set. It was a huge Titanic ship. They can't get the ship out of the theater, even though the show closed back in 2016. Um, and I just saw those women up on that stage and I knew that there were women in that show that were over 40, possibly like over maybe over, over 50 that had been in the show for years and years. And I just wondered what their lives were like. And I started to think about it and the idea of uh, ideas about aging and beauty in America and and what an iconic American place Las Vegas is obviously the image of the American showgirl. It's so iconic. And it's just uh, it just spoke directly to me. And it also made me think about the car industry and the coal industry and the job loss in America around that time. And I just sort of thought, you know, job loss in America, <laughs> but reaction. with feathers, you know, a whole new thing. We haven't heard this I before. I know. I haven't talked about I this. Mean, it's been I mean, like you. is this sponsored by Range Rover? Did you just say <laughs> <laughs> You <laughs> respect <laughs> the specificity <laughs> of their situation, but there is a universal quality. And I feel like what you just said is what's going to strike a chord with literally anyone, no matter who you are or what you do. Gee, I'm going to come your way now because one of the coolest things ever is when you get a great script, but then you find a way to kind of make it uniquely your own. So what is a space you found in Kate's script that you knew you'd be able to bring your voice to in a unique way? Um, I've, you know, Kate's script was originally a play, so it had these amazing characters and this, this flushed out world and that I was so interested in getting to learn more about. Um, but it also allowed to have space for just the visual world of Vegas and let Vegas be a character um, in itself. And I have such a fascination with that place and, and just what is it like to live there? And, you know, I we kind of realize now that you most you oh, mostly see Vegas in the daytime and and it's always depicted in this sort of glittery light. But to see it in this sort of more sobering view, um, I, I was really excited to also add that layer to to the to the movie. I had read a lot about how both of your fascinations with Vegas kind of sparked this movie. So wh what would you say started that fascination? And can you give me maybe a specific example of something you found about Vegas that surprised you along the way that now makes you love it even more? Oh, well, I can't quite place what it is that I like. I think everyone's kind of like, what's wrong with you? Like, <laughs> that's really strange. But I, I think, you know, it represents so much to me and it, and it kind of feels like Pinocchio's like donkey land where it's like all these vices are coming at you and like, how do you kind of, like I remember I was walking around and, and, and someone's like, you can be as weird as you want and no one will judge you. And I was like, this is such a unique place. Um, where am I going with this? Uh, <laughs> Um, yeah, and I, 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 but I think what surprised me about Vegas having stayed there is it actually feels very suburban and like it is kind of like family residential, like, and you don't actually spend time on the strip. Like you actually want to avoid it because it's really hard to park and um, expensive. And so you're just like, oh, I'll do everything outside. You do, there's great restaurants on the strip. Like that's the reason why to go there. Yeah, I, I feel like there is a little, I grew up in New York City and 
Um, everybody always said, you grew up in New York City. Where are their children in New York City? Where are the schools? And I was like, they're in the buildings. I don't know. <laughs> it's, you know, people live here. And I feel like I had that same sort of realization about Vegas, just like what Gia says. It's like, oh, there are people here. Oh, children live in Las Vegas. It's <laughs> crazy to me. Um, and uh, but I, I think it was when I. When I was in college, I really loved, <laughs> you guys are going to be like, what the hell is it? Where is this coming from? I really loved the flying trapeze and I was kind of fascinated <laughs> by circus. Like I loved the circus I, and I went to see O and for my, and my first trip to Las Vegas, and I saw it by myself. I was probably like 20 years old and, and I didn't really, I wasn't interested in gambling. I wasn't interested in drinking or partying even that much. I just wanted to go to the circus <laughs> and it really um, the colors and the costumes and the grandiosity and the spectacle was, uh, just a whole, opened up a whole new part of my mm. imagination. Oh, I love that. I lived in Times Square for like 10 years oh and every single God. time I see that people like, oh, people actually live yeah, in, in that, that section area. of Manhattan. I did live there for <laughs> a very long time and it's lovely. I'm glad that does not. Is have to be part of my life anymore. <laughs> um, for the cast now, one of my favorite elements of this movie is the cast chemistry. It does feel like a script that kind of hinges on you being able to create that family environment. So for each of you, I'm curious, what was the first moment on set that I guess made you stop, look around and say to yourself, like, my God, we really are the perfect ensemble for this material. Oh, well, I feel like the first day oh, or yeah. one of our first days was with the whole cast, cast. making dinner. Right, yeah, that was with, the first scene we ever shot. With, um, I, I think that was yeah. the and then the, the first barbecue scene. With, uh, Dave. with Dave, and then I remember Jamie being like, "This cast, <laughs> this cast, like that's yeah. all you want Pamela to have is that big, strong man." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, to, for me, it was just all of a sudden I was looking around. And I was like, "I am surrounded by people that I admire, that I look up to, that I respect. I can't believe I'm sitting at this table." And I think that's like, and I feel like the thing about it is Jamie Lee Curtis, Pam, who are literal legends they come in but with that same mindset though like every single day the generosity of this cast and crew and the kindness and I feel like that's really what this all like Gia put together a group of just wonderful human beings like every single person on that set was just a joy and I think that's what made this all feel so like symbiotic and wonderful and easy it felt like hard and easy at the same time Every time Gia would text me or call me with another casting update, I was just like, this is unbelievable. When she was like, Pamela is in, I was like, oh my God. And then she was like, Jamie Lee Curtis is in. I was like, oh my God. She was like, Dave Batista is in. Like, oh my God. Karen and Shipka is in. Brenda oh, Song is in. I was losing my mind every time you texted me. You felt that, that enthusiasm and that love you have for the material and each other when you were on stage last night. It's really nice to see that after seeing a movie that strikes such a strong chord too. Pamela, is it the same for you, that, that first scene where everyone was working together? I think that first scene kind of really helped us all find out who we are too in real time while we were shooting. And yeah, that was it was incredible. I know we did the table read and I met Jamie for the first time and I was terrified. I was thinking, oh my gosh. Jamie Lee Curtis, Academy Award winning actress. I have to read with her right now. I'm about to throw up. But she was just like, let's just do this. I mean, she just kept on looking me in the eyes and she's like, she was so supportive and so wonderful. I feel like I've known her my whole life. And she is uh, incredible. She really was a force on the set and brought us all together. And and it was nice to see her at her level in life and, and success in her life be such a real down to earth, nitty gritty, raw, person who was willing to do whatever it took to tell the story. There was no, um, I don't know, no superficial ego, ego, no ego, no ego, nothing. no anything. And, and it was really inspiring. She is consistently one of my favorite people to interview too, because yeah. like sometimes yeah. like when we go into those quick junk, it's like, it's scary, it's high pressure. She's one of the people who I think is best at like putting us at ease and making us feel like we are in a safe space to do our job. And it's just so greatly appreciated. She keeps it real. So, she Literally always, real. always. Um, Pamela, so this is your first lead role in a little while. I am curious why now and also why particularly this role? Well, I think timing is everything. I thought I was never going to get the chance to do anything like this. I kind of thought, oh, well, that's what people think of me. I'm just going to go back to my farm, make jam, and that's it. I'm just going to, I, I, I'll figure out another way to make my life beautiful. But this was just so, you know, the documentary came out, the book came out, Gia saw the documentary and just, and she is, must be some kind of 
master or prophet or something, but she was so wonderful to call me and or to send the script to me. And I read it and I was like, oh God, this is that thing. This is that thing when people read a script and they really realize they're the only ones that can do it. They have to do it. It's life and death. And I felt that way and I get chills even thinking about it. I just, I knew I had to do it. I knew I, I, and so I'm just so grateful. And the whole company was so supportive and so wonderful that I just felt like I just, I have nothing to lose. I'm gonna throw every single ounce of what I'm capable of. I don't even know what I'm capable of yet. I've never, I won't even scratch the surface. I've been getting away with murder in a bikini for way too long. <laughs> I need to do something really good. And so that's why I did it. And I, I'm glad it, I'm glad it happened the way it did. Oh, I'm gonna follow up on that. But I, anyway. I got, I, <laughs> I got I got chills last night when you said that about how you fit the role. And I, I find that to be especially effective after I watch a movie and I can see a perfect pairing happen. And then I know it felt that way when the script came your way. We're going to make Pamela blush right now because, again, first lead role in a little while and you are phenomenal in this film. And I walk out thinking like, there better be many, many more to come. So for, for you two as co-stars, as, as a writer, as a director, what is something about the way she operates on set that you really appreciated? Maybe something that helped elevate your own work that you're excited for more of her collaborators to experience in the future? Oh my gosh, the level. So, for everything. The level of commitment and bravery and vulnerability genuinely was so it was so awe-inspiring but also so um it, it's motivating it's yeah. addictive it's an addictive quality like I wanted to show up every day being the most sort of stripped down real version of myself and approach my work in the most honest way that I could and watching it last night just got me so excited to to take take steps and and moves in my own life and career that are deeply inspired by what you did like oh. deeply 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 truly like that level of ferocity and just just realness that you brought it truly it, it like it's made its way into my brain and it will not leave for the rest of my life <laughs> for sure that, I'm just I'm just being real I do think it's like lightning in a bottle that Shelly and Pamela came together yeah. because it really felt like you I were can't channeling. You didn't write the script I with thinking of Pamela. Like, her. I, I mean, can't believe I it. I can't either. I mean, <laughs> and, and the first time we had the table read, every single line she said was exactly the way I had thought about it in my head when I was writing it 11 years ago. It was really lightning in a bottle. And the thing about Pamela that people don't realize is she is so talented and so wise and so smart and she is for me like walking on set and seeing her put herself out there and be vulnerable and be raw and be nervous and scared I, I said this to Pam last night the thing that I take so much from that is she felt all of those things and did it anyway and I was like that's all I aspire to do is that um, because I feel like you know the world wants to beat us down and you just you are always you're so you per persevere through everything and every single day you, she just I mean you can feel it on screen she put her heart and her soul into every moment and I think that was just so inspiring because like how can you not want to meet that energy when you see someone who is willing to put it all out there and that's what was so beautiful and like moving forward it's like I don't want to do projects that I can't you know be in an environment where that is the standard because being the lead in something you set the tone for everyone else for the entire set and Pamela just set the bar so high and it's like it was you know it made us all uncomfortable in a very safe place you know I think for me as a director this whole cast everyone was extremely open and I, that is such a gift to have and that level of trust is so hard to earn and I think it just came so naturally with everyone and, and for me as well and I, I just the the level of uh, vulnerability that Pamela was able to give me and um, share with me uh, I, f I felt like she, she's like a mother she's like a daughter she's a sister she's a friend like I, the, she, and it's such a wonderful experience to to that I hope I 
get other directors are going to be fortunate to experience because you you go to her house and she's cooking you soup and making you cookies and great great cookies the cookie dough those kept me delicious. alive those cookies kept me alive at the My rio goodness. bringing <laughs> bringing sweaters and socks yeah. to sets and oh you want a cappuccino Puppy here's treats. a little yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh my God! Yeah, so there were dogs no, on set too. Yeah, yeah exactly. That sounds like the best environment ever. Clearly, I feel like I, I'm dreaming. <laughs> what the heck? Clearly, I love when collaborators give each other flowers. But because this randomly came to my mind in my last interview, I do want to ask it to all of you as well because I feel like we're better off if we keep answering this question as often as possible. For for each of you, can you tell me something you accomplished making this movie that you know you'll be able to look back on and say, "I am so proud of what I did there." Mainly because I find people in this business do not say good job to themselves nearly enough. That's such that's great so questions. So that's a beautiful yeah, question. The splits. Good job. I feel like I, I got to breathe. You know, I feel like I've been holding on to the secret for so long that I'm capable of more, and I just felt like to, to be able to do that was really important. Yeah. Beautiful answer. I have been fighting for this story to be told for a decade, whether it was the play or, you know, it was very magical when Gia came to me to, I mean, I had a film script, but when she said, let's make it, I was like, this is, this is the way it's meant to be. And to see it actually come to life with the most incredible cast and crew I could ever possibly imagine the most loving, nurturing environment for all of us. Um, I mean, I'm the luckiest writer in the world. Well, you're amazing. Yeah. You're the best. We're so lucky. Are you kidding me? It's like one of the reasons this experience was so easy because the words just like, um, to be honest, I think, I mean, it has a lot to do with the women up here. It was just letting go. Um, I think that was a huge thing for me. Pamela opening the doors for us to not, when we were in a showgirl makeup, to not wear anything. It was the first time in my life that I was like, at 35 or 36, I went out there with no makeup on because if Pamela Anderson is doing it, so can I. And for me, like as an actor, it's like, that was, it sounds so silly, but it was so freeing. And Gia, consistently every day pushed me to just let go to go to a real place and let go and it's like you don't realize how much you're holding on to and so I think that's what I take from is I'm I'm proud of myself for allowing myself to let go but that's really truly thankful to these people who I knew would catch me if I were to fall <laughs> I feel like so much of this movie like the universe just kind of really came into place in such a natural way that I I just I feel like my job as a director is to sort of put certain puzzle pieces together and then let it go off and and you know breathe and live and and um, but I guess you know I've had so many different experiences on set but this one I felt like I was able to really trust my intuition and and I think that comes with being like so supported by all the women around me and the and and dave yeah, <laughs> strong yeah. dave yeah. So strong good. sensitive yeah. male he's the, yes, best. the best um i yeah. like i feel like I'd, i've known he's had great range for a while he's now but best. still i got like i got a whole new layer to him in this movie he's incredible i was very impressed yeah i was very impressed by everything across the board seriously the the passion you all put into this really does leap off the screen and the rawness just like it rocked me to my core so Huge congratulations on thank the last you. show, girl, and thank you for sharing some of your experience with thank us. Thank you. Thank you. It's a great thank you. To everybody out there, thank you for watching this interview. Stay tuned. More coming from the Collider interview studio for you very soon.